Okay, so hey, it's me. It's Zach, Zachy boy. Right? right. I got yeah. I made you lots of I, I made you lots of money from the, my first three movies, right? Uh, yes, Zach, we're very impressed uh with the returns that we've had with your movies. The Dawn of the Dead remake was excellent at the box office. You had some really really good buzz uh with 300. Uh Watchmen was very well received by a lot of people. Maybe not the biggest success we were hoping for, but it was uh it was still very well received and an excellent piece of filmmaking. An excellent example of what can be done with a real gritty gritty comic book. That's so, what I said. Right, and you were right. Absolutely right in this case, Zach. So so what have you got for us now? I would like to do mm-hmm. something original. E- easy on the on, on the sofa there. Oh sorry, is that is that new? It's it, well we just we just had it brought in. So it just, is new. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good leather. Yeah. It's good leather. So so okay, so let's let's hear what you got. You want to do something original. 100% original. I'm thinking this has never been done. Are you okay. ready for this? I'm ready. World War II. Um, now, Zach. Uh, <laughs> it's great, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it actually has been done. Um, the second Spielberg, war? Yeah, uh, Spielberg actually uh, they did a whole thing about saving a private named Ryan. Uh, it, was, it was pretty big. Won some Oscars. Huh. Um, don't forget the there's the uh, th- thin red line. Um, I mean there was big red one back in the you know back in the eighties there. The one with the it, dude. Uh, and I, I'm just I'm saying it has been done. So uh, let's. Do you have anything else? I got I got more use? I got more screenplay ideas. Okay okay no that's good that's good. Uh okay how about uh all right so I got there's these books that I really want to adapt into okay. a movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I know this doesn't. I know I said I want to do a, uh, original, but th- nobody's ever adapted this before. Uh, okay. Lord of the Rings. Okay, Zach. Um, first of all, it's uh, awesome. They, they were they were adapted into cartoons, uh, and then actually more recently, uh, Peter Jackson fellow uh, did quite a big deal where he adapted like all of them and put as much of the books in as he possibly could. Pe- so it's been done from every nuance. Peter Jackson, the cigarette guy. <laughs> no, uh the fantastic uh, director from Down Under who directed the Frighteners, uh Meet the Mel Gibson? No, no, no. In fact, um he's not allowed in my synagogue anymore. I I mean I don't blame you there. Okay, so uh th- th- that's okay. That's okay. I got I got more. How about how about you got more. A, Well, that's good cuz uh, you know, a movie. Yep. Uh yeah, I got more. Um, how about a movie about uh, girls in an asylum? Never been done. Well, there was Girl Interrupted. Uh, so, I mean, there's that. How about a movie uh, about Terminators? Terminators. There are There is literally a franchise called Terminator. There's Terminator 2, Judgment Day. It's like one of the greatest action movies of the 90s. It's it's actually one of the go-to movies of the 90s when you're talking 90s. All right. Easy on the couch. I'm sorry. It's a habit. Okay, fine. You know what? <gasps> Wait a second. I've got it. Okay, because you really... You don't have to sell me on this one, Zach, because you're telling me you want to do something original, and all you're doing now is you're pitching me stuff that's already been done. You're pitching me stuff that is an existing property and that you want to remake or have no idea that it was remade or that you you really got to bring it home to me zach tell me something boffo that i can send to the box office all those things i just pitched you as separate movies oh god yes we put them all into one movie continue you know when i pick a movie that's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Oh, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Welcome, 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 welcome Hello. To, yeah. Nathan says hello. I am Brendan. I'm Nathan. This is the said. 50th episode. Wow. 
It's of been, what were they thinking? Such a long, strange trip. <laughs> it has been quite a ride. <laughs> And because it was the 50th episode, Nathan really wanted to give us something special for this uh, this uh, this occasion. And yeah, boy, and was, howdy, have you I ever was really, done that? <laughs> I was really glad that you that you took my suggestion of uh, just a Saturday Night Live sketch, and and we watched that, and we're going to talk about that for the next hour and a half. That you know that awesome. It was that my favorite. It's really easily one of my favorite Steve Martin sketches from Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah, so that's not what happened. No? no, did we get the wires crossed? Because that's what I, I. You're a big Saturday Night Live guy, so I figured uh, you'd I, be. That's why I chose it. You, uh, I, I watched the the Zack Snyder movie. Oh, good lord, Brendan! Why would you do that to yourself? I figured it would be tough to fill an hour and a half with the Saturday Night Live sketch. It's maybe for you. Do you want to take a second and watch it? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, we'll be right back! And we're back! <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe you did that to yourself. Oh, and then I just Nathan. did that to me. You just did that to you. You, uh, you, you were the one who bestowed Zack Snyder's magnum opus upon us. <laughs> Sucker Punch, 2011, starring <laughs> Emily <It's>... Browning and <laughs> Carla Gugino and <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> Jenna Malone. Oscar Isaac. <laughs> Oscar Isaac is in this movie. The only way this thing was getting an Oscar. Uh, hey. <laughs> and the most random cameo of all time, John Hamm. <laughs> oh, don't forget, Scott Glenn was in it too. Yeah. <laughs> John Hamm, I, John, my reaction to John Hamm, though, was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he owed somebody a favor. <laughs> I feel like, well... It's, and it's not like he's ever been in a Zack Snyder film before this, so... Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's good friends with Jenna Malone. <laughs> Could be. But yeah, Sucker Punch. Uh, right from the get-go, we should say this film did receive a bit of criticism for its portrayal of women. Oh, uh, and also the fact that it's a stylized nightmare and a bit shocking, of a fever dream. Shockingly enough. This is a quote I have here. This is not a review, just a quote about Zack Snyder's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, but I should I should preface this by saying I don't think Zack Snyder is necessarily a bad guy like we talked about Steve Walsh. Yeah. I just think, he, anyway, this is the quote. Zack Snyder must have known in pre-production that his greasy collection of near-rape fantasies and violent revenge scenarios disguised as a female empowerment fairy tale <laughs> wasn't going to satisfy anyone but himself. That's one rather biting one. <laughs> uh, the other one I have is, depending on whom you ask... Snyder set out to make either the ultimate sexist masturbatory fanboy fantasy or the ultimate critique of sexist masturbatory fanboy fantasies. He failed spectacularly on both la- both counts, but in true fiasco form, there's something fascinating and even strangely majestic about that failure. A funny thing is, I remember when this movie came out and that ev- like everybody was just like, this movie's trash, it's don't waste your money, that sort of thing, and all of the defenders who came to the to to the movies, you know, defense as defenders do, uh, were saying like it's because fanboys can't take the idea of a woman saving themselves, and there wasn't a man as the uh, as the main protagonist. And, nope, this movie is just a mess. Yeah, because that happened when Wonder Woman came out, right? Everybody hated it. Well, all, all, <laughs> all, all the incels and men rights one, the, the people did. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there's no pre- pleasing some people. No. Uh, no, this this thing... Well, we should note this thing did not do well at the box office. No. Um, now, the numbers may sound like it didn't flop, but I can assure you it did not do well. Uh, oh, I had it written down, and now I don't even remember. I think... It made like about five, five to ten million more than it cost, which is not okay. good. No, I think the budget was something like a hundred and seventy-five million, something insane. Because for some uh, twisted reason, they never lump in advertising and stuff for the uh, for the budget. So, if you say a movie makes its budget back, it's not a good thing because no, you're still not breaking even because the counted millions that go into advertising the damn thing. Right, and also like the other thing about that too is when you make money internationally. 
that doesn't all go directly to the movie. Like you only make a certain percentage of that. So it's better to make most of the money in North America or in the United States, and I guess in Canada, um, yeah. rather than solely doing really well in like China, for instance, which is what a lot of movies do. Like that Warcraft movie. Yeah. Apparently, apparently- huge over there <laughs> made like a, a trillion dollars in fucking china made yeah. like 10 bucks here like that's why the transformers movies keep getting uh the big returns because they do fantastic over there yeah they, they can everybody could see them here and just dump all over them but you know what and when they had when they hit the chinese market they just eat it right up china loves robots well i mean i'm just gonna say I, con- controversy controversy <laughs> But, Sucker Punch, <laughs> how to even begin? We open on a stage, which we, I thought was weird. We do, yeah. Uh, a curtain opens, and we're on a stage, which somehow becomes the movie, the opening ten minutes of which is basically a shitty music video. Um, there's, and- a, there's a doctor in one of the, in one of the shots who's shaking his head, and I immediately thought, even he doesn't want to be in this movie. He's like, nope, not not going to do it, and just they, walks off, sc- off screen. They, they just caught footage of him turning it down, because he never <laughs> appears in another part of the movie. But this is, uh, just to give you an idea of kind of the music in this movie, it's just a little snippet of some of the, the amazing uh, cover songs. There are a couple of genuinely good songs, but this is one of the Oh, covers. and they're all, they're all period accurate, right? Yes. Well, you'll okay. hear in a second. That's very period accurate. Here we go. Okay. Spin it. Yeah. Your head will collapse. But there's nothing in. But you ask yourself, where is my mind? Where is my mind? So first of all, on top of that being a horrible cover of the Pixies, where is my mind? <laughs> Um, just like, <laughs> it's, the whole movie is so depressing. <laughs> yep. I get that this movie is not going to be, like, upbeat the whole way through, but there is, much like a DC movie, there is no, like, it's all, whoop, it's flat and down. Like, there's no up at all. No, it's, it's definitely very, um, de- depressing, uh, to watch, to say the least. Even the, um... Even the action set pieces uh, are still like they're so uh, they're so drained of color that you're like I, you feel like you're just like yeah they won but did they really win? <laughs> nothing feels also like the, the the other thing that really hurts this movie is nothing feels like it matters. No, like it, 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 stuff just happens. Well, well, I guess we have to get into the plot a bit to, to explain this, but basically we start off with, uh, the character baby doll. That is her name in the movie, folks. Her name yeah. is baby. They doll. never give her real name. Do they? We don't get any of the girls real names except for Amber. <laughs> yeah. All of them have nicknames like baby doll, rocket, yes. uh, sweet pea and blondie Amber. and Amber and, and Amber. <laughs> The one Asian girl, the token Asian girl, was like, just, just give me a name. <laughs> I thought it would be hilarious if she had been named Blondie. <laughs> well, to be fair, the character named Blondie has black hair. Yes. Like, jet black hair. Like, like there's... <laughs> and a get back stare. Is that... <laughs> yes. Better song you gonna than any... be my girl? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Better song than most songs in this movie. God damn right. Uh... So, yeah, so we start off with the character Baby Doll, played by Emily Browning, uh, who you probably don't know because I don't think she's in much else, to be honest. Uh, but she's she's crying because her mother has just died. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming her stepfather had something to do with it. Or at least, yeah, it seems like there's some nefarious uh Yeah, he's, you, you get an idea that he is, he, there's something inherently bad about him. Mm-hmm. You don't know if he if he killed the mom hoping to get the uh, inheritance. Uh, when he finds out that she left all of her money to her two girls, he gets a glint in his eye, and you're like, "Is he gonna kill them, or is he gonna try and rape them?" You know, it's never too clear, but it's it's very clear that he's a scumbag. What what I think is funny is that he finds out the inheritance is going to them, and his solution is, "I'll kill them." You're still not getting your inheritance. 
Yeah, because they the don't money. have wills. That's going to probate. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what his... I, he just gets angry and says, well, I guess my only solution is rape. Because mm. uh, he gets real drunk, mm-hmm. and because he can't get a hold of baby doll, she scratches him in the in the face. He decides to go after the younger sister. Uh, now this is where I got a little confused because baby doll finds a gun and shoots at him, misses. Now, did she accidentally kill the sister, or had he already killed the younger sister? No, from my understanding, is that she had accidentally killed the sister. I, although I'm not entirely sure. How? Because they never show where she gets shot, and the general area that she would be firing at on him would be up considerably higher than where his sis- her sister was, unless we're talking about some sort of errant ricochet that hit her, but that was never ever made clear. Yeah, like, it hits a light, and then you see, like, a pipe burst, but I don't think mm. it was, like, the way she found the sister and where she found her, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And, surprise, surprise, like you said, it's not really explained very well. No. (laughs) But, because of this, first of all, also, I don't know how she missed. (laughs) Because he's literally standing in front of her, about two feet, maybe. And he is a large chap. Yeah. And at least if if you're going to miss the head, like, just go for the, the chest? I don't know. Well, the good news is that even if she survives this, she has an excellent future as an Imperial Stormtrooper. (laughs) <laughs> yes she is actually emily browning is in the newest star wars movies <laughs> that's where you may have known her emily yeah browning. and then the uh, and all the fans on 4chan will get mad at her and she'll have to quit twitter and oh, instagram Jesus. yeah hmm. mm-hmm. people cool. are very, people are grown-ups fanboys are real grown-ups online mm-hmm. but yeah so they eventually the cops show up she gets taken to an asylum by the stepfather. I would think that the cops would be doing that. Well, here's the thing. It is supposed to be like, what, 1940s? I, who knows? It could be the it could be the future for all I know. Because well, like, it jumps around like... <laughs> yeah. It, it, there's, there's so many like... Uh, well, if we're, we're, okay, let's just take... Let's just take that the the, the first world that we're in is the base. That is sure. that is the reality. Yeah. So looking at the cars and other modes of transportation, not to mention how uh, the you know mental health is handled at the time, I'm going to say it's a pretty safe bet that we're talking late 40s, if not early 50s, because World War II is a thing. Right. At this at this point, because it it gets. You know, it's it's it plays into the movie later. I do take issue with the song choices then, as you mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah, not not period specific or not, not being appropriate true. rather at all. <laughs> yeah, not and like, could there be a more on the nose song about people in an asylum than "Where Is My Mind"? <laughs> or you know, well, they they do "Sweet Dreams." They do "Sweet Dreams" plays well, and not the original, by the way. Of course, they're all covers. A terrible cover. Yeah. Um. It's just like all they do. All they did was take someone to like sing it slower. Like those are the covers of these yeah. songs. <laughs> it's got to be depressing. So, although I did think it was funny that they were playing "Sweet Dreams" uh, when they took her to Lennox House, <laughs> which isn't Lennox House because uh, yes, but he's got the keychains is Mount Pleasant. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Ugh. Well, and isn't uh, Annie Lennox? Isn't she in the Arithmics? Yeah, yeah. She's she was the so. Uh, Yep. So they used her song, but not by her, and then made a reference to her. <laughs> I, I I hope that's on purpose, but I don't know. <laughs> I I if it's not, that's yeah. Uh but Baby Doll is taken to the asylum by her stepfather, and we meet Blue, played by Oscar Isaac, who at that point hadn't really done a whole lot. And nope. I think you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think he's very good in this movie, I will just say. Uh, Maybe controversial opinion? I don't know. He seems like he's still trying to get... uh, I don't know. I feel like he has a hard time. He's a little over the... He's pretty over the top. Well, he's definitely very... um, What's... It's that melodramatic villain that he... And it's all that all the time. There's no subtlety to, to the portrayal. And constant, like, pauses... 
Maybe like, that's what they were told. That, that's what he was instructed to do. If, if that's the case, then spot on. Good for him for following direction. <laughs> sure. <laughs> also, he does seem a lot uh, like way too young to be the warden of this place. I feel. Well, I don't. He's not a. I don't. He's not a warden. I, he's almost like a, like uh, would be like a shift uh, or a supervisor for the orderlies. He mm-hmm. wouldn't like because they. He talks that uh, uh, the Gorski, the the doctor, she's the head doctor. And, uh, but she's, she wouldn't be, she, he's, he's more in charge of like the, I guess the delegating and the boots on the ground type stuff. So like a lot of, he deals with a lot of paperwork. His job would be more clerical than anything else. Whereas she would be more concerned about the day-to-day treatment regimens that the patients would be going through. (laughs) But yeah, like I said, they, they show up to Lennox house is the name of the place. And then when you, he's wearing a key around his neck, um, that says Mount Pleasant on it. Okay, I didn't notice the name. I know I, no. all I noticed with the key is that she, it, it does a very like slow mo on the key, and then the knife, and then the lighter, or like or the fire, Be- and it, just very subtle hints of what's to come. I gotta tell you, if he had taken this to Bethesda and said, "I got an idea," they would have made a fantastic video game with this. <laughs> Be- Bethesda. Well, but the the you know the the folks who do like the. Uh, Wolfenstein and Doom. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This well, basically, this is at first a music video and later becomes a video game. At no point did it feel like a movie to me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, so I don't know. This might be our first uh, video game slash music video uh, film in quotes. Yeah. So he takes the uh, the. They're taking Baby Doll on the the tour. And they take him in, take her into the the gym, which is also a theater, but it looks like the prison a prison gym or a high school gym that was converted into a prison and yeah, the, the sets aren't much much better <laughs> no and like we're we're to, we're told that this is like uh dr gorski again played by uh carlo Gaginos, has this theater set up to get patients to relive their trauma so she can help them like work their way through it i guess which is actually you know that's that's a pretty solid uh psycho psychoanalytical way to the tack to take because mm. you know it forces a a patient to kind of examine what why they are why the way they are sort of thing right uh yeah no that that's yeah not even not even one of the major issues in this movie at all that's this is the it's the I, hey i tried to find good points where i could find them <laughs> yeah um but basically here uh blue conspires with the stepfather so he's not a good guy he basically tells him he's going to need two thousand dollars to forge to forge a signature on a lobotomy so that baby doll will not remember anything that happened and he can basically get off scot-free two grand for a lobotomy yeah <laughs> which again if if we're saying this is the 40s then that's a shit ton of money it is and he actually was originally said what with 1200 yeah so he bought he shook him down for an extra eight for the lobotomy which they are constantly referring to as paradise did you notice that when so he tells him it's going to be two grand for a lobotomy this is such a small point but this is just something i noticed when i was like going through it again real quick he goes the stepfather goes into his wallet and he's just got a wad of tens (laughs) (laughs) but like it's it's probably about like it's not very thick wad of tens either so it's like they didn't even bother to put the correct like money in for the shot (laughs) It should be hundreds, not tens. Yeah, at least. So <laughs> he just has the cash in his wallet too. Like, yeah, two grand right here. Here you go. But yeah, <laughs> he's doing this, and he's like, he's like, uh, you know, you could do this, or do you want the, if you want it done quickly, or do you want the detectives asking questions to her? And and he's like, ah, oh, well, the the truth is complicated. It's not complicated. You're a skis and possibly a diddler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I... I don't get it. Like, if she did accidentally shoot the sister, then the police... Also, the police would have escorted her there, or she'd be in jail before anything. Yeah. Like, it's just... it's it. I, this movie doesn't make sense, guys. Well, I mean, again, it's... If it's... If it's the if it's the late 40s and early 50s, w- w- women didn't have as, as many rights as they do now. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, so Baby Doll is introduced to the girls, the girls that she meets there, the other inmates, who, by the way, there are more than, 
five girls, but we only ever see those five girls. There, there has to be more than five people in this whole asylum. Yes. <laughs> but there is, uh, I believe we named them all already, but it's Rocket, Sweet Pea, Blondie, uh, Baby Doll, of course, and Amber. <laughs> Amber, yeah. <laughs> Which is the only real name <laughs> among all of them. <laughs> Uh, but she quickly, uh, now I'm just trying to think that does this happen before? Well, the, it's the first thing they take her like she's going to begins. Well, no, that's it. They, they, right. They take her to John Ham uh, to John Ham and he's <laughs> about to, to deliver the lobotomy. Uh-huh. And then that's when we get the drop down with no warning whatsoever, where we drop down a level of her consciousness or sanity into the brothel world. Where Sweet Pea is her. No. Because she's wearing a blonde wig and she's in the same position. Oh, yeah, okay, I know what you mean. Okay. working out, like, a routine, and she's Horrible. like, why do we have a lobotomy in the routine? The best yeah. is to say she goes, because they're, like you said, they're in a brothel now, and they're yeah. doing a dance routine, and she's like, I don't understand the point of the lobotomy. What I really like is how she's like, the mental patient thing, I get it, that, that could be hot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the crazy ones are a demon in the sack. What can I say? <laughs> Sweet Pea, she gets what she wants because she's the star. She's the star. She's a great big star. And her sister, and Rocket is her sister, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, like, who cares? No one really knows who any of these girls are. We don't even know why the rest of the girls are there. Yeah, and then we get reintroduced to Baby Doll. Yeah. Uh, where we basically, where Blue is basically uh, a, a, a pimp. Yeah, and uh, her stepfather is uh, a, priest? a priest with an Irish a- affectation. Yeah, well, I mean, you a know, little bit. Catholic. Like he's, he's got a. Well, he suddenly got like an accent now. Yeah, uh, my favorite is he says like, "Don't worry, girl. You'll be. You'll have a great time." And then she spits in his eye. And he's like, "You little bitch!" <laughs> well, isn't that actor legit? Like uh, Irish or British at least. What? It, what is? Isn't the actor? Oh, the guy, the guy who plays yeah. Stefan. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't even know who that is. Uh, I, I think I've seen his stuff before, and I want to say he's had accents before. Brendan Gleeson? Yeah, <laughs> that would have been yes, <laughs> on par with John Hamm showing up at this movie. What are you doing here, sir? <laughs> One question I have about Baby Doll: They do mention that she's 20 years old. She mm-hmm. looks like she's 12. There's a, that, but I mean, that's what they're going for, right? Oh, I know, but that makes it a little bit more creepy. Yes. Uh, I will say, though, <laughs> that she actually looks really good. Like, she's just bright and, like, chipper, and, like, she's very, like... She looks like an anime character come to life. Yeah, but she looks very, like, magnetic, you know what I mean? So yeah. much so that the other girls kind of look like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all look like they're 20 years older than her. Yeah. <laughs> um... And Vanessa Hudgens is, like, an attractive girl, but in this movie, she does not look good. <laughs> She's got, like, a mop of hair on her head. I mean... I'm not saying it's her fault. I'm saying it's the people that did, like, the, the yeah. lighting and the makeup and stuff. Like, I, I just think, like, they're doing those these girls no favors. Yeah. No, that's true. No, all these girls are attractive on their own, just not in this movie. <laughs> Well, I mean, it has to do with the costuming and the lighting. Oh, and yeah, 100%. Everything. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm blaming it on. So. <laughs> well, we get we cut to a bit where, uh, is it, Rocket is stealing Baker's chocolate? Yeah. Delicious, which... delicious Baker's <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> right? He's just going to eat it on its own? Gross. Ugh, gross, indeed. And the cook... Like, is so mad that she stole a block of Baker's chocolate. He tries to, like, basically rape her in the kitchen. Is it just me, or did the chef look like Rob Ford? <laughs> I think it was him. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually the leaked video that got him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that he was in Sucker Punch. <laughs> him beating up Jenna Malone for stealing Baker's chocolate. <laughs> yeah, this is a documentary, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she... But Baby Doll saves her. Maybe I'll say, this is the real, this is the real, uh, plot point that kind of gets them, gets them all kind of in cahoots with each other. Yeah. Because she, yeah, she nearly, she nearly rapes her. And then Baby Doll comes in with a knife to save her. But then I'm like, in the world of the brothel, this hardly ever comes up again. Like, she hardly ever seems like that 
hard willing. Ass. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't really seem like a hard ass the rest of the movie, except for like you know the fantasy world, obviously. But but here's the and I guess before we even get into it, because we're gonna drop down another level of sanity here, where where <laughs> with all the battles take place. Oh God. And we're constantly going back and forth between these two planes of her existence. Would it have killed them to have at least one or two dip ups into the base world, so that we can kind of get an attack of at least some of this stuff is legitimately happening, and it's not just all in her mind. Yeah, and and my other problem with that too is that this all seems to be happening within the span of like three seconds in the real world. Yeah, but which doesn't later make. On, any sense but because, later yeah, on because, they explained that it didn't it took place over days which doesn't make any sense either because yeah. we didn't we she literally shows up and then it's like oh time for the lobotomy yeah like it's it, uh, Zack Snyder well, baby doll has her tryout which can is I, set to modern techno can I ask a, a general question about the the whole brothel thing okay why, why is it that baby doll's idea in her mind of like her escape from this, like, asylum, is for her to be, like, in a whorehouse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this asylum is torturous. Empowerment? Female empowerment, I guess? <laughs> I'd rather be owned by a pimp, a pimp Oscar Isaac, and forced yeah. to dance. <laughs> that just, that just, it, that was just weird for, to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so where, where, are we, where are we at now? So, her, her tryout that's set to modern techno music. Right. Uh, I think this is actually where they play the Bjork song in the in the movie. Yeah. Uh, which, at least, it's the original. <laughs> you have all the weapons you need. You have all the weapons you need. Now, here's the newest song from Bjork. Yeah. It's 1943. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when we get another drop down into the the, the battle fantasy world. Yeah, it's like which another... changes constantly because the the brothel is a constant as well. Like mm-hmm. when you drop up out of this, it's always the brothel. It's always the same people. They're always that. But when you every time we drop down into the battles, it's a different period of time or even just a different reality in general uh, with the same stuff happening. Yeah, the only constant is the girls and <laughs> the wise man played by Scott Glenn. Yeah, I was like, sweet, stick from dead daredevils in this. <laughs> yeah, I literally have a note that's almost the same thing, except it just says, sweet, Scott Glenn. <laughs> I guess that's cool. <laughs> Nothing against him or for him, but like, just like, oh, all right. I thought it was kind of weird that this first fantasy that Baby Doll goes to is sort of like, um, like an Asian temple. Yeah, and, and she's given some sage Asian wisdom by, by a white by guy. By Scott Glenn, wh- yeah. old white man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes total sense for him in the all the other fantasies, but this one, this, wouldn't it have been horrible if they had made him, like, Asian but still Scott Glenn? Like, affect an Asian accent or oh, something? Oh, man. Ooh, that would have been disastrous. Well, at least it was in 2011, I mean, had that on yeah, its but side, I guess. That's never stopped them before. I mean, think about it. You're right. I mean, it, at least it wasn't a Wayans Brother movie. I mean, that's right. Because it could have been way more offensive. Or other Zack Snyder movies. <laughs> true, true that, true that. Oh, so where are we? Yes, so, so the giant Samu- samurai. Well, the first stick, or <laughs> Scott Glenn, because we never get the guy's name, gives uh, her the list of all the stuff she needs. Yes, he's also he's credited in the movie as Wise Man. Okay, well, I'll call him Stick. <laughs> um, okay. It gives her, it tells her she's gonna need flame and a map and a knife and a uh, flame map knife and a Jesus. What is the other thing? Because there was five of them, and the last yeah. one was super cryptic. Uh, there was okay. There was a map. There was flame. Yeah. There was a knife. Yeah. There was something else. <laughs> Jesus, what was it? I can't remember. That's what this movie does to you. This is podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, god. Well, let's think of the stuff I... they steal then. They steal, they steal a knife from the butcher. They steal a, a lighter uh, from some dude. Uh, they steal uh, the map uh, or blueprint to the place. Key, a key. 
A key, of course. The one around his neck that sent him out pleasant. Derp. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the fifth thing, which is a mystery. Uh, a, a sacrifice. A victory. A perfect victory. It's like, shut up. We don't get the revel in our shut up because the giant stone samurai made of light show up and she has to fight them in high heels. Yeah. Which... And this scene lasts approximately 35 minutes. Uh, did you say 35 years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go Because it was long. And it, it presented to me like the, the first kind of problematic thing that with the women in this movie and... The, the, the stuff that they get to wear when going into battle. She's going into battle and fight a sword fight in high heels and essentially an Asian schoolgirl outfit. And then later on, when they're in war, all of the girls, do any of them have body armor on? Of course not. Any bulletproof vests or helmets? No. Uh, no? Well, I think one of them has a helmet that says amber. Eight, okay. Maybe <laughs> any, any full-length pants and combat boots? Hmm. No, lots of skin exposed. Right. This uh, this movie is like it, it's like if if it, if it, someone in their mid teens who has just really gotten into girls in video games wrote a movie called Man, wouldn't it be cool if after that the movie? <laughs> that's what this would be. Are we sure that Zack Snyder actually made this movie and it's not just a fourteen year old boy? Oh, maybe he just took the writing credit. I don't know, but it, it, everything is like you know. They, he's gonna fight a samurai with it with with a no one Wilson knows. Oh wow! A oh, wow Wang! It's a, a wow. wow a Wang knows. That's quite the Wang you got on your Wang. <laughs> what he's got a penis on his face? <laughs> the the, the uh, Owen Wilson and the samurai. Yes. Um, yes. So she fights him, and they're made of light. Yeah, and one of them also has like a machine gun. Yes, a machine gun which which fires uh flares apparently. Every bullet lights up like a flare. Now, I got a friend of mine, Luke, who is really big on these sorts of things. Uh bullets don't make light when no. they you don't see them stream across places. Okay? In there's, a, there's right, there's a muzzle flare that that from the explosion, but the bullet itself doesn't generate any light. Now there is a thing called a tracer round. I've been told by him, of course, uh, that will generate like a phosphorus glow, so you can track your targeting. But mm-hmm. they usually only fire around every fourth or fifth shot. They're not every shot, and every shot that this guy fires off, this samurai firing off a machine gun, is lit up like a Christmas tree. Well, let us also not forget that. Uh... Also, light bullets exist from Alone in the Dark. Of oh, yes, the rave bullets. I forgot about those. <laughs> totally real, based on a real thing. Yeah, but yeah, and I actually wrote here because I like I never thought I would end up writing this note about a movie with uh, a scene with giant samurais. But I was like, I wrote down, can we just stop the giant samurai scene? Which is a sentence nobody should ever have to say. No! I was like, I've had enough of the giant samurai fighting. <laughs> but it ends up like a big, like a Naruto Dragon Ball Z uh, to finish it, where she was she decapitates one of the samurai or something, and it's all like, it's a flood of light, and then we pop back up to the, the brothel level. And that is how you dance. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Oscar Isaac, I actually wrote down at this point, I'm like, Oscar Isaac is the Robert Davi and showgirls of this movie. <laughs> but, like, a little bit more aggressive, as we'll see later. Yeah. Uh, and then we find out that it's not just, um, not just Baby Doll that wants to escape, but Old Rocket wants to get out, too. Yeah, I think, like, the idea is supposed to be that they all kind of want to escape, but they're not really willing to take the risk. Yeah. Well, this is the point where, um... Like, uh, Sweet Pea doesn't want to escape because she doesn't doesn't want to take the risk. Yeah. And, uh... And she's kind of the she, de facto leader, sort of. Yeah, and she's she's talking smack about Baby Doll, and, uh, this is where Rock... She kind of stands up and says, hey, you know, she she defended me, she stopped me, when that, that monster had me pinned down, and, 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 uh, he grabbed me in the kitchen, and I was like, excuse me, you were stealing. <laughs> just gonna put I that mean, out there. I mean... He did go a little overboard. A little bit. But she's she was not 
blameless. I mean, she was going to eat that delicious baking chocolate. Ugh, gross. Just raw. Just take a big <laughs> chunk out of it. Oh, uh, and then just with, with just that, um, they're all in. <laughs> yeah, September That's it. coming in September. <laughs> because <laughs> there you go. Uh, got that wrestling reference in. Got it in. There you. Because uh, uh, Baby Doll starts laying out all the stuff they're gonna need, like a list, like in a video game. Like this mm-hmm. would be a great video game. Oh, and Nathan. Yes. For this, for this secret plan to to occur, <laughs> um, where does she write this highly important list that probably no one else should see? Oh, she just flips over the uh, the chalkboard with the run order on it and starts jotting it down on the other side. Uh, but but it's under lock and key, so no one could just walk in and see it, right? Oh no, just anybody who's looking to clean both sides of the uh, the, the the slate would uh, would see it <laughs> by merely flipping it over. Yes. But the room is locked, right? No one could just walk in. No one ever just walks into that room. Uh, well, you know, considering that Blue runs the place, I'm pretty sure he has access to it all the time, anytime he wants. Okay, so what you're saying is it's a horrible fucking place to write down your plan. It's a terrible place. Yes, an absolutely oh. terrible place. And there's only five of them. Yeah. So, I mean, there's... all... <laughs> and I realized that we just had a real problem trying to remember all five items. <laughs> I know. We, we This is going to seem really hypocritical. <laughs> but... They should, at the very least, be able to remember the things that they need to escape. We didn't need those things to escape. We just needed to help us get along in this terrible, terrible plotline of a movie. Nathan and I are not trapped in a brothel, guys. No. We didn't need to remember these items to escape said brothel. Yeah. Yeah. This is a life and death situation. I don't (laughs) think you would write that down on a fucking chalkboard where everyone can see it. (laughs) <laughs> oh this movie yeah but yeah she eventually she eventually convinces them all to do it though yeah that they're and gonna they get these the, items the blueprint is the first thing they take isn't it the blueprint the map in blue's office yeah blue's blueprint <laughs> and and this is the weird thing too so in this movie we are made to believe that when when uh baby doll dances that sends the men into a trance, whoever's watching her. Like, like yeah, they can't pay attention to anything. They're so mesmerized by they're it. They're mesmerized. And I'm like, I like how they never actually show her dancing. Like, I bet that actress could not dance. And they were <laughs> just like, well, we'll, uh, we'll, just, we'll just show the beginning of her kind of swaying a little bit. And then we'll cut into it. <laughs> then we'll drop down a sandy level and it'll be, I don't know, fighting samurais or... German Nazis or dragons or whatever. It's Wouldn't like it be in, cool if next happened. It's like it, it's like Inception with a lot more sexual assault. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot less good writing. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so basically, uh, sweet. I think it's Sweet Pea. She goes to see Blue and says, "Hey, Baby Doll's gonna dance. Don't you want to watch? Oh, I sure do. Let's leave this office unlocked and go see that." Yeah. So and then we, she yeah, starts to dance, and we drop down into World War Two. We sure do. Uh, and the wise man is there to brief us again, and he all he has some of the greatest lines in this movie, doesn't he? <laughs> if you uh, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Don't don't uh, don't sign. <laughs> don't write checks. Your ass can't cash. Which he mangles that one. Yeah, he says, "Don't write checks with your mouth that you're." Or he says the opposite. You can't cash with your butt or something. Yeah. When everybody says don't write don't write checks that your butt can't cash. Right. You yeah. know? And this is uh we should note this is like steampunk World War II. Yes. <laughs> like I and I just wrote, I just want steampunk Hitler. <laughs> Where is my steampunk Hitler appearance? It didn't happen. <laughs> Fuck this no. movie. Well, there we got we got steampunk Nazis. I mean, yeah. Oh, and like, did you notice too? Uh, when Scott Glenn does the whole like, okay, you're going into battle. You're gonna need to, to take this map, which is the map they're actually stealing from the mm-hmm. uh, brothel, which is also the map they're stealing from the asylum. Listen, guys, this movie is fucking nonsense. But anyway, all this is happening to the set of a cover of White Rabbit. <laughs> oh, right. One and there's a pill. giant mech. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the f- weirdest trench fight in the history of tele or television and movie history. 
The thing that Scott Glenn says, though, is he's like, I, one thing I noticed is he's like, oh, and don't worry about killing anyone because they're made of steam. And I'm like, they're Nazis. Why would I worry about killing any of them? Yeah, there should have been, yeah, it would have been, should have been perfectly fine. <laughs> like, I, great. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, there is a giant dirigible at one point, And all I can think of is, oh, the humanity. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's like a kid with maybe just a History Channel's afternoon viewing of World War Two documentaries. That was his working knowledge of of World War Two, and he said, "Yeah, but wouldn't it be cool if the if they had been steam powered robots and there was a giant mech? Let's and write then, that." And then Zack Snyder was like, "Yes, fuck well, yeah, it would." Fuck yeah, did you guys hear I'm getting to do the new Superman movie? <laughs> Bet it's gonna be great. He doesn't have a mustache, does he? Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this, I will just say this, guys. All, all of these scenes don't matter. Not a bit. At all. I would have honestly, and again, this is not something I thought I would say. I would have rather just watched the movie if it all took place in the either the asylum or the brothel. Yeah. I'm okay with not having any of these sequences. Mm Mm-hmm. It just, it's... Just going back and forth between the brothel and the insane asylum. Sure. Just so that we can get, uh, uh, we can kind of get an idea of what she's using as an escape mechanism to deal with being in the, in in the asylum, but still knowing that, you know, this stuff is still really happening in real life, but with the veneer of her insanity disguising it as them trying to escape a brothel. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's it's so like why add another layer to it? It just doesn't make any sense. There's all uh, there's a couple of things I did write about the war scene though. Uh at one point there's a door and Rocket just kind of shoulders into it and she's like, "Well, we can't get into it, I guess." Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, they have giant like bazookas. Yeah. <laughs> like no, I couldn't open it with a football tackle, so. <laughs> uh also these at one point these two like Nazi steam things are like she baby doll's about 20 feet away and instead of just like shooting her with a regular gun or you know like going to like kick her or something they're slowly loading this giant gun Mm -hmm. so baby doll easily runs over and just kicks them in the face yeah (laughs) i mean i guess you could say they're made of steam yeah so maybe they're not smart it's they're not and you know that it's they're nazis too so yeah she also uh cuts bullets away with her sword (laughs) <laughs> it's like you freaking Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And at least Deadpool was actually shot. <laughs> yeah, your bullets are really, really fast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like oh, but oh, guys, Deadpool two, go see a better movie, <laughs> a way better movie. <laughs> but she, yeah, and it's like I know this is supposed to be a fantasy world, but if she could just uh, chop all these bullets out of her way, what kind of what kind of suspense am I supposed to be feeling here then? Yeah. Like, well, if she could just do that and, like, basically fly, because there's points where she is basically a bird. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, like there's no... There's, there's, no, no, there's s- no physics at all. No. Yeah, there's no... They, like, there's no suspense. There's no, like, but it's oh, fine my God, are they going to be okay? That's it. Like, in the, if we were talking about this portion of her step-down psyche is... It, it's absolutely fantastical because it's... You know, there's a giant mech, and they're fighting steam people, and there's giant samurai, and later on there's dragons, and I really felt like, I when especially the later ones, I was like, this is like if somebody decided to film a story from the magazine Heavy Metal. <laughs> you know, not not movie about heavy metal, but like the the fantasy magazine Heavy Metal. When you said steam people, all I could think of steam yeah. people. Steam people <laughs> look like people made of steam. Steam people. people. <laughs> so, uh, so we go back to the 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 not the real world, but the brothel. Yeah, we well, know we step up to the brothel world, and she's got to dance for the mayor. But we get this kind of like real Scooby Doo moment for Blue, where he's like, "Tackles, there's two tackles." Honest to God. Map? Oh yeah. The honest to God, do you think a guy with his skeeziness is so observant that that uh, something like that would catch his eye? No. No. <laughs> There's no effing way. 
No, none at all. <laughs> he sees the two tack holes in his map, and that makes him think that someone has, like, taken it down. And put it back up, and, and put it so back that's up. a cause for concern. Right. Yeah. Uh, but Blue is very impressed with the dance. Like you said, he tells uh, Carla Gugino, he's like, I want her to dance for the mayor. And she says, yeah. "He, she's not ready yet. I'm sorry, she's not ready yet. She's luring people into a trance with her dancing. I'd say she's ready. And all the stuff that goes on with him, like, kind of grabbing and pawing on the girls, and, and, and all, which this is one of those things where I really wanted to know, like, I wanted them to step up into the, back up into the insanity asylum level so we could see, is he really legitimately doing this to these girls in the, in the base world, in the real world? Well, and I thought, like... In the in the brothel scene, you know when they they show Rocket shows Baby Doll the, like the sex room, I thought that was like oh so they're actually getting like raped during this. Which yeah, because that's what that's the same room. Uh, spoiler alert that Blue later takes Baby Doll in and tries to rape her. Mm hmm. Just like all, all obviously done up differently. Yeah. So I think I think that's also going on. Mm. Yeah, this movie is fun for the whole family. Did it, did it seem to you like the mayor looked like a gross Charles Nelson Riley? He he did look pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> he was a grossy. Uh, Mariah would definitely call him a fug a fuggo. Total fuggo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah yeah oh, and I feel so bad for Amber because she's like Ugh, kiss his neck. Ugh. Get the lighter get the yeah. lighter from him while he watches yeah. baby doll dance. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Harrison, Harrison Ford sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> and then we drop down again into World War Arthurian times. Oh, Lord of the Rings? Yes, but with like the, more like Reign of Fire. Yeah. Yeah. There are there are but they are literally orcs. Yes. And like, there's a dragon. <laughs> there's a dragon. And it's like it's just oh, the nonsense continues. It's like Oh, you gotta go kill this baby dragon and steal two crystals out of its throat, and then those but, crystals make fire. What? Don't wake the mama. Uh, <sighs> I was like, yes. "God damn you, sucker punch!" And they God. they jump out of the plane and have their superhero landing, which would destroy their knees. Oh yeah, that, that, you gotta <laughs> love that trope in like all yeah. these fucking movies. <laughs> all wearing lingerie, not a stitch of armor on them. Yeah, female empowerment, Nathan. Come on. Yeah, and there's flying monkeys. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Oh, when you gotta ape them, you gotta ape the classics. Pun intended. <laughs> I also note here that um, I created a new word for this movie. Okay. Uh, slow mover kill. Oh, oh yeah. There you <laughs> go. That's a... that's how I felt. Yeah. Yep, and that's that's a reasonable feeling that you have there, Brennan. <laughs> oh, I, I like I when 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 it got to the point where the mayor's ash landed on his own foot from his cigar in slow motion, I was like, "Give me a fucking break!" <laughs> you gotta pad that I film somehow. Literally yelled that at that point. I was like, "This is unreal." <laughs> <laughs> so upset. Uh, so, but they get they do on the brothel level. They do get the lighter. Oh, well, yeah, so, because they, 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 uh, well, hold on, this is, oh, right, the dragon thing, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they kill the, they take the crystals and make fire. Yeah, and, and they, because, and they kill them, they kill the mother dragon, who, they crash into, like, a building or a fucking, I don't, god damn this movie. Who fucking, who fucking cares? <laughs> I do, they crash through a bridge or something, they trick it into, like, running itself, it, it basically... Killing it, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah, baby doll basically ends it by like, she's on top of the of the dragon's head, and it's got she's got like her sword in its head. And she's like, yeah, victory. Yeah. And then we and go back to then, the real world or the brothel yeah. world. Yeah. And they're they're celebrating, and 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 blues all like, oh, what do we got over here? Oh, I talk. Okay, so I do actually have this little scene here. Uh, okay. Where Blue is up, uh, starts to suspect something at this point. Mm -hmm. So they do take the mayor's lighter, um, yep. and he kind of like reaches around for it. So Amber was basically making out with his gross Charles Charles Nelson Riley, his neck. <laughs> she probably got her tongue stuck in a wrinkle, 
and uh, <laughs> or a fold, a fold. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Zack Snyder's like, can we show that in slow motion? All sweaty. It smells like peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I try. I do. And all I ask for in return is just for respect, honesty. You know, oh, that's okay, Mark. Uh, a give and take relationship. But it's come to my attention. It's come to our attention. That a few bad eggs, led by one little egg in particular, have spit in the face of that generosity and are plotting against me. Me. Your protector. Your employer. (laughs) And that's the line. He went from hot to cold. <laughs> Employer! Employer! Yeah. Just like an insane... Like he was having random awkward pauses until that point, and then when he just goes off on that last word, he lo- he, 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 loses, he loses me right there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he starts to su- suspect something. However, he doesn't do anything yet. No. But he does get Sweet Pea to think that they should maybe call the whole thing off. Yeah. And, uh... You know that's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> he has the line about the uh, the the fraternity of performance is like actually it would be a sorority in this case. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He's like yes, the, you're celebrating. He's like celebrating the performance, and he's like yes, the fraternity of the theater or something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Blue. Uh, these are oh shit. Is that the twist? <laughs> Go back to the asylum, and they're actually all it's an actually all male pr- asylum. <laughs> they're all transgendered. <gasps> Transgendered asylum? Well, if it was the forties, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. Because they would have just assumed all transgender people were crazy back then. I well, would. yeah, yeah. That's. Oh they man, would've. that would have been a much more interesting movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still a film about tolerance. <laughs> yeah, like by ben Zach, and Arthur. by Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't do anything with stealth. <laughs> So now they got to get the knife. I think that's the last thing they need to get, isn't it? But, yeah, but before that, Blondie is in tears. Okay. Oh, she's so sad. Vanessa like, Hudgens Why is Blondie so sad? is so sad, you guys. Because she's worried about getting caught. Mm. And uh, Carola Gugino walks in the room and says, Oh, don't worry, you can tell me anything. And then fucking Blue is right there and be like, Yes, tell I me anything. Can't tell you shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but she spills the beans. Mm. And, uh, yeah, then we go to... The girls are going to dance for Rob Ford. <laughs> Rob Ford the cook. Rob Ford the rapist cook. Um, not saying Rob Ford is a cook, guys. I don't want I don't want that to be on the record. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. Hey. I don't uh, think he did that either, but, you know. Topical. Just, fucking just wanted to Doug. smoke some crack. <laughs> fucking Doug. Good. L- have fun with that, Ontario. Yeah, I, I, I just, it's uh, to get off on the tangent. It's so funny to see them, you know, Ontario people in Ontario who are actually for that whole situation. And it's like, oh my god. Well, you'll get your own little mini Trump at a provincial level. That's right. Mm. I, I Godspeed to you folks out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So they're in the kitchen trying to get the knife from the cook. However, uh, they don't notice that a bunch of water is slowly making its way over to the cord on the radio where the uh, completely modern song is playing, of course. Yes. And Baby <laughs> Doll starts her dancing. And this one... I, was, I thought I was like, man, it was really cool that they could turn to that all shitty cover station. <laughs> <laughs> all shitty covers all the time. All the time. <laughs> but this time, uh, they go to fight a bunch of Terminators, basically. Yeah. Or a bunch of, like, T-1000s that are not made of liquid metal. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I even fucking know. <laughs> then the wise man is like, you have to find a bomb nicknamed Kitchen Knife. Oh, shit. Clever one, movie. <laughs> we get in- intergalactic... Was it intergalactic planetary... Oh, that's... That's because everything is so ridiculous and, and over the top... That uh, like the, the physics and everything. I was like, oh, if they were fighting, are they? Is there like no gravity where they're fighting? 
<laughs> no, no, there's no gravity Intergalactic anywhere. planetary, planetary, intergalactic. <laughs> they cut through those Terminators like their swords are goddamn Hattori Hanzo swords. Yeah. <laughs> like, just no problem whatsoever. Um... I did so many robots one, senselessly murdered. I did laugh at one of the robots slow motion punching like rocket. <laughs> it did like that Sherlock Holmes slow motion thing. <laughs> yeah, where her skin just like flaps a little bit at the same time too. Yeah. But the robot uh the robot dance is cut short. Because the the uh, the wire gets the wire of the radio gets wet, the cook comes out of his trance, and <laughs> is about to stab Rocket. But we go back to the world, we go back to the fantasy world. Yeah, which that doesn't make any sense because if he's no longer mesmerized, we shouldn't be dropping back down into that level of uh, the psyche. Nathan, this is filmmaking. No, it is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's all I got. Okay, <laughs> don't you mean plot? Yes, actually, that is what I uh, was referring to, Nathan. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Glad I could help you out there. Uh, so he killed Amber and Blondie and. Uh, well, he kills Rocket. He stabs Rocket, right. and then we. But the but the but in the in the fantasy world, uh, she sacrifices herself with the bomb, which is meant to say that she sacrificed herself so the cook could stab her instead of her sister. And. <laughs> Are they dead in the base world? I think so. That's never made super clear. The oh well, they do mention later that she in the ba- in the main in the real world that she helped an inmate escape and uh set someone started a fire. On, started a fire. So we know that that stuff is real, but they yeah. don't confirm a lot of the other things. No. But I mean, sure, let's say she died for real. <laughs> Um, or maybe she just got raped too. Who knows? Maybe. But she gets killed, and then, uh, Q Blue talking about his toys. Oh, that was weird. Again, I, it, this is supposed to be empowerment, and <laughs> Zach, I heard, I read a review that said Zack Snyder doesn't know the difference between female. And... <laughs> this is a rough one, but Zack Snyder doesn't know the difference between female empowerment and rape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like it's, well, it's just like, it's like these girls, he beats them down so much, and then they have no choice but to fight back, but that's not really, like, female empowerment. No. Like, female empowerment would be, like, it would be them taking over the asylum to get their rights back. It wouldn't be running away from him or tapping, it would be them standing in solidarity. Right. You know, it wouldn't be them sneaking around and doing it. Ser- it would be them taking their own back in your face. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, Blue is now fully on board with knowing that something is up. Mm-hmm. And he decides to just flat out kill two of them. He kills Amber. Right. And then he shoots Blondie because he's like, eh, no one need, no one likes snitches anyway, even though that information helped him out a good, de- a great deal. And this is like, so, like, did he, did he shoot her in, in the, the base world again? And the other thing is you don't see it either. <laughs> no. You just hear the gunshots off screen again, probably because it's a PG-13 movie as well, but yeah. still like, uh, you don't really see headshots in those kinds of movies. And if you do, it's very quick. And I just want uh, them to know that this is not a perfect victory. <laughs> because that was the fifth thing. It was like the sacrifice, the perfect victory. None of this is a perfect victory. No, because they, they lost two people. Three. three. Oh, three, right? It's not a flawless victory either, that's for sure. Damn straight. Yeah. But we, we find out that they actually managed to, to jack the key. And uh, oh, Baby yeah. Doll is going to make her sacrifice well, so that... She... She takes it from and she stabs Blue in the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Her own, her actual, like only real, like real world or as close to real world as possible. Badass moment in the movie. Uh, outside of threatening to kill the cook. I mean, yeah. Again, uh, that was like an hour ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So again, go ahead. She says about the final well, they, sacrifice. They jack his key and they're gonna get away. Just as the big roller is showing up, big roller is the 
the key of the code that they've been using, which was the the doctor, John uh, Ham. Yeah, John Ham on the base level, who's going to come and give uh, baby doll a lobotomy. Mm-hmm. So this is where she has her sacrifice, so Sweet Pea can escape. And she's like, "I realize now this story isn't about me." I was like, "Okay, your story is always about you. Yeah, your I life think- is your story. It's always about you." I didn't get that at all. But she's like, the she story, makes... it's your story, it's your story. Yeah, and so she, you know, she, I don't know, it makes <laughs> makes it known where she's at. So it's a distraction to those so that Sweet Pea can, can escape and get away. Well, Baby Doll gets captured and she gets a lobotomy. Well, I thought when she, when Baby Doll gets in front of those people for the distraction that she was going to start dancing again. And I was like, fuck no! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> Nope, because then we step right back up to the uh, to the asylum world. We're back up to the base world, and um, t- t- totally not a perfect victory. <laughs> no, because as soon yeah, as soon as she comes back up to the asylum world, she is lobotomized. Yeah, and and John Hamm's like, whoa, whoa, did you see that? Yeah, in her eye, right there. It's almost like the movie Sucker Punch just happened in her eye. Yeah, cash that check, John Hamm. Cash that check. <laughs> Also, the there were there was a disturbing line at this point. Uh, John Hamm says, "Like the way she looked at me, it's almost as if she wanted it." <laughs> like I thought that was I thought that was odd, considering what the t- content of the movie we just watched. You mean empowerment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "It's almost like she wanted it." Like what yeah. the fuck movie? <sighs> but anyway, so. Yeah, she gets lobotomized. Uh, With no lobotomy scar or no. any trauma to her face. <laughs> and perfect makeup. Yeah. <laughs> and in the meantime, Sweet Pea is escaping. Mm-hmm. Because she's she helped her get out. Now, this is the part where I wonder if this is even real. Because she gets on a bus and, oh, look who the bus driver is. It's Scott Glenn. Yep. <laughs> and he Who's tells like, you... Yeah, she's been on the bus with me since... Like Kentucky or wherever the fuck he was coming from. Yeah, he told he tells the cops because they they see Sweepy and they think she's suspicious, and he's like, no, no, it's okay. She's been on this bus the whole time and lies to them, even though he's never met her before. Yeah, but then when she gets on the bus, he's like, we've got a long way to go. What? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, so, you know, I what? actually, if, my note is what? What? <laughs> I wrote that at least three or four times during this movie. Uh, but then. Back to the asylum. I, it, I have the key. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the asylum, though, we find out that, uh, well, this is the this is another really disturbing scene because Blue takes the lobotomized baby doll into the, the sex room mm. and is about to do something to her, but then he gets arrested because it turns out they found out that he forged the lobotomy uh, papers under yes, Dr. John- Gorski's name. Yeah, John Hamm shows Dr. Gorski the, the order, and she's like, that, that's not my signature. <laughs> Dr. Carla Cugino, is that you? I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a second, Miloš. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been working on my my impression uh, of her, and I, I'm such a fan that I thought I could pass myself off as her. Sorry, thousands of pardons, uh, Mr. Brendan and Mr. Nathan, sir. Well, thank you. You're doing a fine job on the windows, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. Is 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 new uh, cleaning solution I got in the mail from Czechoslovakia? Okay, I want to go over that with vinegar and water after. Oh, that could be good. Uh, it has been leaving some really disturbing streaks on the window. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna yeah. Uh, Nathan. Was oh, well, b- back to work. <laughs> <laughs> another day, another dollar, as they say. All right, see ya so, later, Milos. Goodbye. Oh, what a guy. What a great guy. So glad we hired him. <laughs> Stop stealing my shoes. Oh, that's good. That's, yeah, that's good. Studio that's good. shoes. Uh, the end? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Zach and Deb. Zach and Deb Snyder. That was uh, that was Sucker Punch. So basically, uh, uh, Baby Dolls lobotomized, but she she has her victory, sort of, kind of, and. Sweet Pea gets away and is going back home, and it's still really dark. Yes. <laughs> it's t- it- female empowerment in Hollywood in 2011, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Yeah. 
But right now, we are going to take a brief commercial break, so we will be right back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. And we're back! All right, hey! Oh, man in the gator, traffic on the 10. Snap, snap, snap! <laughs> That's my thing now. Okay. I got a new catchphrase. Uh, Nathan? Uh, yes, Brendan? Uh, I feel like it's time for a little low haiku? Yes, that would, um, that would be the point of the, um... Oh. The show where we ah. we just have our best um, NPR voices and uh, try to enlighten our um, our audience with the uh... God <laughs> can't do it can't do it yes uh, seventeen syllables that um, really just <laughs> no. sum up this movie uh, no I got this <laughs> yeah. 17 syllables. 17 syllables that sum up Sucker Punch. Yes. Uh, um, do you mind if I begin this week? By all means, um, you certainly can go. <clears throat> I got Sucker Punched. Nice visuals, not much else. Does Snyder know girls? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Empowered hookers, what the hell is happening here? Sucker punch, Zach S. <laughs> yes. As in, I would like to sucker punch him as well. Perfectly encapsulates sucker punch. Yes, it it definitely does. It really, really oh. does. Can you please? Get- Good lord, I man. Didn't think that was such a hot button topic for you. Oh, the saliva. Sp- well, if you're, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do public radio, you gotta do it right. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know that was ever an issue until you started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but Nathan, despite our opinions on this movie, mm-hmm. we always say. Don't take a word for us. Yeah, don't don't take our word for it, kind folks, because the critics gave this one a whole heaping twenty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which I I yeah okay it's high. It's I don't know if it's you know it does it's not super high. I mean, it, obviously, it's still a fail, and while the movie itself like is kind of a, it's kind of a mess. Mm-hmm. And I think as far as like a story and stuff goes, it's still there's still a lot of flashy, shiny going on. Not anything that's gonna make up for it. Mm-hmm. But I, again, I just mm. well, I will say that the audience gave it a forty seven percent. Well, okay, that's... so they're a tiny bit more generous. N- maybe, yeah. All the Zack Snyder fanboys with the forty seven percent. <laughs> you um, guys, you just don't get it. Oh well, <laughs> you can you just wait. <laughs> so, first review here, I'll uh, I'll I got here. It's an it's a negative one. Uh, it's from William Goss at Film dot com. He says Snyder likes to think that his Russian nesting doll of a concept is enough to excuse its hollow center. Oh, clever. 
Andrea Gronval of the Chicago Readers says, Gun-toting hotties combat assorted villains and their robot henchmen in this tawdry, repellent action fantasy. I don't know why she turned the British aristocrat there at the end. but Yeah, that was, that was weird. Hilarious. And that was weird that she wrote it like that. Yeah. That she wrote it with an <laughs> accent. Like, I didn't know I didn't know that you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from Nigel Floyd at Time Out. Oh, he sounds quite British. <laughs> Snyder pulverizes our senses with derivative digital images and obvious musical choices, but his failure to, de- to delineate the levels of reality is confusing and self-defeating. Thank you. More later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was actually Montrose Monkey. <laughs> um, Alan Rickman. James Biradinelli from Real Views. So oh. the movie isn't bad in the way some incompetently made movies are bad. This is bad because there's much skill evident in this pointless endeavor. And I think that's what I'm getting at about the whole 23 not being higher than I expected because there is obviously there's some skill at hand from everybody in this movie, but it, it it's pointless. Except Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I just bought Vanessa Hudgens. You're the next one to come after us. On blast. <laughs> yeah. Next, yeah, Twitter war with Vanessa Hudgens. Uh, Vanessa Hudgens, I have a great movie. <laughs> uh, this, this is a positive review, and mm-hmm. you'll just. Uh, this is the only, like, really one of the like more glowing ones I could find. It's not super glowing. Uh, it's from Sergio Benite of Espinoff. Okay. Uh, this is un oh sorry this is unfiltered Snyder and either you love him or you hate him the film doesn't allow half measures mm, maybe <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the stuff is half measures because it a lot of it is like I said just like man wouldn't it be cool if if this happened next and then this happened that'd be so awesome oh yeah I I, sure. I drew a dragon about it <laughs> well I did find another um positive one from ali gray Ooh. from the shiznit.co.uk oh a well-respected uh reviewer column yep uh if it wasn't executed with such panache it would probably qualify as one of the dumbest movies of 2011 that's a positive what yeah, oh it's got a little saying it had panache okay <laughs> that was the positive aspect wow um, sure. this, this last critics one, and then I have a couple other ones that I found on, uh, the audience ones. This last critics one is from Roger Moore. Oh. Dun, 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 of the dun, Tribune dun, dun, News Service. So I don't think dun, it's the same <laughs> And all he, all his thing says is, wait, they're letting this guy remake Superman? So that's, a, yeah, from 2013. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a positive review. Oh, okay. Well, I got a, one final negative one here all from... Right. Wesley Lobel, and then you can get into your super critics or super reviewers. <laughs> had Zack Snyder left no idea undeveloped, he might have had a better film, but underdevelopment appears to have been his motto. Mm, yeah, I agree. What a beautiful looking mess that somebody else, I don't know. <laughs> this is, uh, this is, this one is actually from a YouTube user. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually found this when I was looking for the uh, for the clips for this episode. Um, so this person has quite an opinion here. <clears throat> this is actually a pretty deep movie. Too bad, unfortunately, as always, the majority of people are unthinking, simple-minded, shallow, dumb, and will probably only think of this movie as a mere chick action flick or worse some sexy slash sexual visual for their eyes and shallow lust that person got it that person knew what they were talking about person is woke as they say uh oh okay this is a a theme all these people are like just are they're they're like you just don't understand it that's all their positive (laughs) reviews like this person saying great movie and formidable cast so if you can't understand it, maybe it's because you lack imagination. Burn? <laughs> what? Why do I need an imagination to watch? The movie's right in front of me. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, the idea of a movie is that you don't need to. You can watch it unfold in front of you. If it was a book, I'd 
lend your argument some credence. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> this one is uh, somebody who wants a few allies for his uh, his positive uh, review mm-hmm. of this movie. An underrated chick flick for women that women that I know do not seem too fond of this. It's sad because we would get more of this if more women supported it. But the visuals just, are awesome. Just when you were like sad, I was like, did Donald Trump review this? <laughs> it's and I can sad, understand guys. why why women wouldn't like this movie because you're supposed to be okay. So your idea of empowerment is a movie directed by a guy where hookers defeat use their sexy dance moves uh, to uh, escape an insane asylum. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. This is the last one I'll read. This is just like it kind of actually uh, parrots something you said in a different in a different way, but it kind of brings it up uh, something you said earlier. So uh, this is a movie full of eye candy. Like if a boy got asked the question, "What would you like in your movie?" and he thinks about it and says, "Hmm, robot ninja assassins and zombie Nazis and giant samurai, and I want five hot chicks to fight them," it was a spectacle. And that is not how you spell spectacle. And a nice continuation of the 300 movie. Uh, this is not a sequel. Yes, you need to get over the plot. Not all plots can have a six sense twist at the end. But this one is worth seeing just for the visuals alone. You know what? I'm not surprised he got to do Superman. You know what? Uh, you're right. Not all plots need a, a sixth sense twist at the end of them. But you know what all plots need? A point. Well, I'm gonna let Brent take this. Brent, Brent, what do all plots need? Plot. So, yeah, those are the reviews. So, Nathan, mm-hmm. as a bad movie, as as a mm-hmm. as a very bad movie, would you uh, recommend people watch this? Honestly, no, because when I recommend a, a movie, a bad movie for folks to watch, I will have myself while watching the movie probably taken. A few riff notes while I'm going. I didn't. There was not a whole lot of riff notes that I took while making this. So meaning to me, it's not a whole lot. Like any riffing that I would do would almost seem forced. Like I, I would have to like. Ugh. And and when if if it's if there's a lot of effort that goes into your making fun of the movie, if it's not easy, if it doesn't come easy, hmm. don't bother. Don't bother. I I hope you admire my restraint at that moment when you just said that. What? When you said come easy. Oh. But now it's too late because now I've mentioned it. Now we've mentioned it and you've we've ruined it all. Come easy. Get it? Ah! Um, yeah, so you're going to say no. I'm also going to say no. Like, the visuals are great on their own. Hmm. The visuals, it, it, like, the movie, there are parts of the movie that the special effects look good. They're just pointless and it's just like it's it's like the transformers movies where like it's like oh yeah they're the special effects are expensive and they they look great but why am i watching this usually yeah it's just a bunch of visual white noise that's happening yeah like it's just yeah. it's it's not fun to watch it's and it's also depressing like it's also like dark yeah, because I mean, really, for all the work that they they go into breaking out of the place and only one of them gets out yeah like i get one of them having to make like a an ultimate sacrifice type thing because it's one of the things that's on the list that they're given so it's it's foreshadowing that you know somebody's gonna get offed before they escape but only one of them i mean really (laughs) nathan do you realize that you just gave us three wrestling references in a row unintentionally did i i got the The ultimate sacrifice the list and really (laughs) There you go. All right. <laughs> they're like they, it's so effortless, effortless now. It's just part that of they your just vocab. happen without me even. What's that? It's just part of your vocab. Yeah, just it was so effortless. Just yeah. it just they just happen and I don't even notice. Yes, sir. So, now that that is under that now that that is gone and done with, sucker punch. We are done with you. We are moving on. Uh Nathan Mm-hmm. We are taking well, not we're we're not taking a hiatus. I shouldn't say that. Next week we are doing a mini. We are going to air a mini episode. There, there will be a mini episode. There yeah. will be a mini episode. But then the week after that, we are going to air our uh, our little snippet, our little thirty minute snippet from the live stream from the Cure event. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and then we will be back on July the 5th, and I think that's actually correct. It is correct! Oh, Brendan, you're doing great with that calendar, bud. I'm a smart man! (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so, uh, next week, mini-episode. Week after that will be our live stream for the Cure episode, and then July 5th we will be returning, so I guess, and that'll be the start of summer schlockbuster flopbuster whatever you want to call it yep and remember only movies that were released from june 21st to september 20th i still maintain that summer blockbuster season is june july and august but i will adhere to your little ruels yeah june july and august you're no you're right june july and august the beginning of june is what i mean (laughs) anyway (laughs) anyway not may okay well can we at least at can we at least include all of june I w- yes because okay, that is I, what- I will okay. I'll concede that fine fine I am good with that then so uh so since that is be- that will begin with our next actual movie episode uh I'll drop a little hintaroo a hintsky yeah just a little clue possibly some uh, a brief snippet to say hey what this is what's going to be happening uh yeah that's what I'm going to do so a the- brief insight if you will a sentence or two to let everyone know what's what's going to be your next episode. Right, so that being said... Just a little tiny, just a little bit of wordplay. I'm that we'll, we'll give... gonna kill you. Continue. Thank you. So, <laughs> our hint, my hint is... <clears throat> Roll the dice! So we're going to Vegas with Slayer? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's, Roll it's the dice! Slayer meets the Phantom of the Park delightful i would pay him good money to see that <laughs> just slayer playing the part that kiss did in that movie and it, i feel it would take a much harder turn I, much earlier in the movie it'd be funnier if it was even tamer though <laughs> <laughs> it ends up being like that episode of south park that had corn on it <laughs> oh yeah but that's your clue folks so figure that one out so plugs uh, uh yes my, my good friend what's that Mo- I, I was gonna say it, it is a bit it is a bit past his bedtime so i wasn't sure if Mont- montrose was around uh, yeah i was gonna wake him up here Get okay yes 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 i love his cup of tea mm. yes um but what's this for uh, it's the, the, the bbc2 what were they thinking podcast uh montrose to oh, plug was, plug your uh, okay well yeah. uh, uh montrose monkey did the third uh, Esquire and friends on Facebook, uh, Montrose Monkey Din TV on YouTube, uh, uh, at Montrose the Third. Uh, that's the number three. Adi on, on Twitter. Uh, delightful uh, British monkey. But why did you wake me, Montrose? You 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 didn't get to watch Sucker Punch with us, aren't you disappointed? No, I'm I'm super glad that I didn't watch that because you know what? I have British things to do. Uh, I feel that you you folks should have watched a Hammer film, or something with Christopher Lee. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 kind of terrible, but still enjoyable. Not um, not not Zack Schneider's video game rape fantasies. Um, I'm going to take my leave of you and go back to bed because everybody who's decent and respectable is in bed at this point. Uh, thank you. More later. Adios, my friend. He, he's he's not he's a real well. I mean, he's a monkey, but he's a real bear when you wake him up. Uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But as for as for our podcast, of course, you can find it all the podcatchers, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, uh, Al Jazeera Network, <laughs> Podify, Podify, Human Sentai Pod, Teddy Ruxpin Appreciation Society, ABC Spark, but not Disney, HBO, Pod Knife, Pod, Yep. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. What were they thinking? We also have a Facebook group. What were they thinking? Interactive, where you can tell us all how great uh, Sucker Punch is. <laughs> you, can, you can also find us on Twitter at wwtt podcast on Instagram under the same thing, and I believe that's it. Oh, we do have a Redbubble page now. We do have a yes. couple of merch, uh, merch, merch. Yeah, designed by Mariah Lee Rett. Uh, because she did designed by Mariah Lee Rett, inspired by something Nathan said on the show, and that's all I'm gonna say. Go check it out. <laughs> Redbubble.com slash people slash WWTT podcast. We have two things right there. We have a sh- we have uh, our logo, which you can basically get on anything: shirts, mugs, 
laptop sleeves if you want. <laughs> and that was my cat that just meowed in the background, but I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> it's our logo, and then there's another one that's inspired by one of the movies we covered, and something that Nathan said in the show. Is that... <laughs> You'll have to prove that you're an adult to see it, because that's what I found when I went on to Redbubble. I felt better doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just because of certain content that's on the shirt. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, but yeah, you can check that out, and... Uh... Uh, let, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag now, but I think in a couple months, once we hit our two-year anniversary, which is coming up soon, uh, I believe we're going to start a, pa- a Patreon page. Mm, great. Some added Good. benefits for our peeps, for our listeners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So more details on that to come, and I think that's it. So I guess I just have one question for you. What would that be? Well... In this movie, mm-hmm. this this movie, uh, basically uh, three layers of different worlds, right? N- none of which we're confident is a hundred percent real. Mm-hmm. In the, in a movie where the lead character looks like she could be conservatively fourteen years old, okay. <laughs> let's let's face it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. In a movie where Zack Snyder's, uh, as the review put it, masturbatory fantasies have come to life. Yes, in a in a film where Oscar Isaac is really working through that acting, that early doing acting, doing his best, uh, doing his best, muscles. yeah. yeah. In a movie where almost nothing fucking matters, mm-hmm. I just have to ask you, what would that be? What were they thinking? Maybe Superman should be doing that. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. I'm you're just a guy. You're a cool guy. Don't get me wrong, but you're just a guy. So I. And I thought for his evolution as a character, Superman's character, there's a crucible that he has to to go through, sort of to really embrace his humanity or find, like, what is it? It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Bana 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 out. Bana 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 out. Everything I learned from movies helps to make life a little bit groovy. With a one last plot holes a gratuitous movies. It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy at eilfm.podbean.com. Hey, do you like movies? Hey, do you like podcasts? If you do, then come on down and listen to the Home Video Hustle podcast, homie. Hustle, hustle. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? (laughs) Well, every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I pick a bunch of movies at random. Sometimes there's a theme to it, sometimes not. PJ picks the movie out, and guess what? We watch it on Friday. We talk about it for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, whatever we feel like doing. Might give you something good to watch, baby. Come on down every Friday. So come get your hustle on with Home Video Hustle. You can find the show on any podcatcher app, or you can come down to homevideohustle.popping.com. All of them in one place for you. So you can go ahead and binge it like it's Netflix. We ain't the defenders. Uh, But I like to think we a little bit better than that. (laughs) Come out at your boys, man. Come chill with us. Peace. Peace. So I was out with this girl the other night, and she said that she hated Star Wars. Can you believe that? I could top that. My latest date told me he didn't like black and white movies. What? Do you have a movie deal breaker? Is there a film you love so much that if your significant other didn't like it, it would be Splitsville? Well, we're dating hosts Greg and Lauren, and in our podcast, Movie Date Night, we introduce each other to our favorite movies and see if our relationship can survive. And if our partners appreciate the movies as much as we do. Find us wherever podcasts are available and follow us at Movie Date Night on Facebook or Twitter to talk movies with us. Hey everyone, it's Chris and Mike from The Recasting Couch, the podcast where we take our favorite movies and discuss what they would be like with new actors in all the lead roles. Hey Mike, tell them where they can find us on social media. You can find our website at therecastingcouch.com or on Twitter at RecastingPod. And of course, you can listen to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Android, or anywhere else you find your favorite podcasts. Yeah, if there's a service that's not posting our pod, you let us know and we will rectify that immediately. Damn right. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody.